of guests, the huge rundown of special premiere documentaries we've made, 30 minutes long, 45 minutes long, an hour long, uh, you know, secrets inside the Vatican, uh, Larry Nichols in person at his house, spilling his guts on everything on the Clintons. I don't even know what to call that. It's so powerful. A whole nother documentary on another surprise subject. All the special guests tomorrow. It's going to be 28 hours long. Because I added a fourth hour, and they said, you know, that makes it 28 hours. So we're going to start at 11 a.m. tomorrow. We're going to go right through to 3 o'clock the next day. And most of it's live. There's going to be some, basically, films we've made. Um, some of them in the works for years. Some of them films I didn't basically release. And then now we're just not going to call it an official film. We're just going to release it tomorrow. So a lot of stuff coming up 11 a.m. tomorrow until the next day at 3 o'clock. That's 28-hour global transmission. And yeah, it's a money bomb. Um, I've had some years recently where I decided to take no pay for myself. Uh, but I'll be honest with folks. There have been years where I took large profit. If I had a film that was a really big hit and made a bunch of extra money, I'd go, you know what? I had a lot of unexpected bills. I had some family I had to take care of, and I have these nuisance lawsuits occasionally. Why should I buy into the propaganda that as a lover of liberty, I shouldn't be successful? So I'll, I'll put some money in the bank. Zero from the money bombs has ever gone to anything I do personally. It goes into the cameras, into the crew. I mean, you've seen past money bombs, and suddenly there's like four new reporters in a couple months and, and new writers and, and new people and new studios. The last money bomb we did, it was three years ago. And it took us to upgrade, build the studios, hire the people, develop the crew to launch five hours of live TV radio a day. We're now there. Once we go past that level, I can produce 10 hours. I can have a 24-hour network. I can. I mean, we're, we're at the point to be funded by advertising, even in a collapsing economy, doing it from Texas, where it's a lot cheaper than, say, New York or L.A., to just take off and put all the different great crew I have in management positions above the new people we bring in. And then my goal is reached where really I got a trust I've set up. I've got a corporation. I intend if they blow my head off or put me in prison, this just keeps going. And, the, and, and there's backup plans to that. Because when you really fight tyranny and you're really on the line against these people, you realize it's a lot bigger than you, the individual. It's about winning the long war. Now, that means that maybe my great-grandchildren or your great-grandchildren that finally defeat the eugenicist, the scientific technocrats. But you've got my commitment that evil isn't the only force of power in the universe. Good is even more powerful. But good people expect to see a manifestation right away or you don't crave power. You don't crave dominating something. You don't crave being in a position of strength because you're too humble, you're too satisfied at a cellular level. Well, I'm exactly that same way. I don't want to be in charge. I don't like telling people what to do. But you know what I hate even more? Being a slave and somebody running my life. But So after I'm attacked, after I see them attack other people, after I personalize that and empathize and take on that pain at a cellular soul level, then I do enjoy defeating them and smashing them and running them into the ground because they deserve it. They are scum, and they are weak, and they are hateful. So we need to stand up and defeat them. Take action. We're now well into the third hour, going back to your phone calls uh, here right through this hour. Joe Biggs will be in the studio with us for about 10 minutes. The bottom of the hour to talk about covering a 90-minute speech of Donald Trump that's been called sensational uh, by some of the mainstream media. 20,000 people standing room only. Just loving every word he said. I, I watched some of the speech footage, big shot, and it was like one-liners like fish being thrown out to seals. But I guess the stuff he's saying is true. So compared to all the lies of other establishment candidates, I guess it's good. Wall Street's latest panic, Trump could win. And he gets into a speech. We'll, we'll cover that with Joe Biggs uh, as well. But man, what is he going to do if he's not for real? I mean, I saw that scary thing a week ago where he went on Fox and said, you know, we may have to, well, he didn't say we may. We, Merkel's doing a great job bringing these people in. We need to bring these migrants in. Using that politically correct word. 
He's a smart guy. He should have said, these are invaders. We don't know who these people are. A lot of them are ISIS. It's dangerous. The policies of our government putting ISIS in control is what's helped destabilize the whole region. And he knows Obama's been protecting ISIS. He said that. He's got a top general that just left Defense Intelligence Agency as the head of it saying that. He's got the former deputy director of the CIA saying it. Trump knows all this. Trump's real smart. I have no doubt Donald Trump could turn this country around, hyping folks up, being positive. We're cutting taxes. We're, we're repealing the gun laws. We're, we're bringing in immigrants that, that have a history of working and have something to offer. The country would explode. It would take off. But see, you'd get prosperity, and it wouldn't be unevenly distributed to the globalist. That's what's so sick about them. All day, it's class envy. All day, it's wealth redistribution. Now, they want to help you have a dream because they're going to give you some welfare or some college tuition. Tuition costs more than ever. Health care screwed up. Giant screw job. Raising prices. The globalists are putting us through a meat grinder. So I wish Donald Trump was real. I hope he's real. I hope he'd do stuff like that. But the media attacks him with the most ham-fisted attacks that are designed to fail. Now, I told you, and I should have saved the clip of this. I said it 100 times or more. Then I'm going to go to this trailer and, and then your calls. That they do this. Jade Helm went for two months. It ended today. Or it ends today, technically. September 15th. And I always said Jade Helm was to condition us for martial law, condition us for the shutdown of cities, condition us to federal troops. The Jade Helm's own memo admitted it was for domestic operations. They come out and deny it's real at first, and they say I'm a liar. Then they say I'm saying it's an imminent takeover. They're going to take our guns. And I've had the media calling today. I've heard people that have heard it on local radio, oh, where was the martial law? Where was the gun confiscation? It was all going to begin during Jade Helm. And a lot of the people ran with that. Some people online believe that. And, I mean, I get why. You see the world financial crisis and all the other problems and the open borders and the refugee situation. And you say, maybe it is a takeover. Well, they took a photo of me acting goofy on television because I do screw around sometimes. See, I'm their biggest enemy on that list, so they attacked me. Then they go on to say Rick Perry didn't like it. No, Rick Perry attacked me and said that it was a good thing. That Jade Helm was great. Chuck Norris said it was dangerous. Ted Cruz said it was dangerous. Gomert said it was dangerous. Ron Paul said it was dangerous. Rand Paul said it was dangerous. But they stick at Raw Story, disingenuous garbage, like a funny picture of me and Rick Perry, and they say Jade Helm ends with no takeover, and these six nutters hope you forgot their idiotic fear-mongering. No, I was waiting for these, and there's a bunch of them, and then I was going to put it out, and my listeners heard me say this. They heard us cover it. They heard us respond. They heard our first broadcast on it. And I said, it's training for the invasion of America. Under NORTHCOM, which they admit in the Army Times and everywhere else, is for a war with the Tea Party. And then I showed dozens of articles where they admit that. So... There you go. And the military itself was concerned about it. And as Chuck Norris said, it isn't that I don't trust the military. I don't trust who leads our military. And that's absolutely true. Boy, they really hate Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who just said, look, I'll have the State Guard monitor it, it you know. That's the state's job to monitor the feds. They monitor us. We'll monitor it. They came out and misrepresented what he said. They deceive their audience. They deceive their readers. And that's why they're a joke. They think cheap shots like this, we didn't see this coming. They think this will hurt us. Listen, your constituents, nine out of ten times, eight out of ten times, say put all gun owners in slave camps. Ban the Bible on video. We're not going to get your people. We understand that. But there's this big mass in the middle that doesn't know what the truth is. And they're going to see clips of me telling the truth, or they already saw it. And I told people this was coming. And they just know you're a pack of liars. So you've got your idiot constituents that can't tie their shoelaces, who believe whatever you say, and they like little fake victories like this. It doesn't work with the thinkers out there. Our audience is exploding. Your audiences are imploding. 
you're a joke, you're a fraud, you're a bunch of con men in my view, and just go out there where dinosaurs go to fall down like a relic from the past and just blow away. I'm just letting you know you're politically dead already. So throw temper tantrums, tell us you control the language, shoot your mouth off however you want. People want freedom. They want lower taxes. They want to be able to defend themselves. They don't want you telling them what religion to be. They don't want pervert teachers teaching five-year-olds how to masturbate. Just get out of our lives. Go be your own unhappy skeletons. I mean, I've seen your constituents. They're a bunch of brain-damaged idiots who can't literally walk straight. I know who you are. You're hollow. You're a joke. So keep Lion, that's all you got. It's more nails in your political coffin. Let's uh, go to this trailer, then your phone calls. First up will be Emoch uh, in Missouri, and then we'll go to Spirit of Freedom, Mark, Frank, Allen, and others. But I don't even know what to call this. We could make it two hours long. It's all powerful. It's going to end up being like 45 minutes long. But all of it is very powerful. Not saying the video is all powerful, like the great and wonderful Oz. I mean, it's all powerful video. We'll probably air more of it later, but it's cut out about 45 minutes long. Here's a trailer for what I'm thinking is really like Clinton Chronicles Part 3, the new Clinton Chronicles. I mean, we're not selling it. We're not Jeremiah Films. They're great folks, but I don't know what we call this thing we're going to premiere tomorrow uh, because it basically is just an extension uh, of those films. Here it is. I was there at the beginning inside the Clinton machine. I saw it all happen, from the corrupt to the absolutely corrupt. And that's when I thought about my father, who was dying of lung cancer. And what he would do if he knew the man I'd become. And then I thought about my daughter. What if the cocaine they were bringing in was to end up getting used by her? I hit my knees that day and asked God to forgive me. I wasn't a good person. I worked in special operations, Central America, South America. I did a lot of bad things. But I hit the bottom that day and said I was going to make up for it. And now, I just want to see these criminals brought to justice and get their just due. Not made president, but put where they belong, in jail. just a good timing guy but Hillary she's an animal Hillary is the one that I promise you she pulls the strings she pulled him in Arkansas she pulled him in the White House when she was there as the first lady and my god if she gets to be president what you see out here now is going to change we thought it changed with Obama there's nothing compared to what's going to happen with Hillary. And I tell you right now, I will stop Hillary. We've gone further than anybody we know of, and that's all we're going to say. And people can ask us a hundred different ways and from a hundred different directions. And we're just going to leave the ultimate decision up to the American people. I really um, just want everybody to take a deep breath and relax and just, you know, sit back because here they come again. We're going to have to just ride through this as we have so many of these other um, false accusations. All right. Uh, it will premiere tomorrow. I haven't even figured out the name for it yet. What is it, 10 o'clock tomorrow night? Free streams at Infowars.com forward slash show. We're going to be broadcasting for 28 hours live. I know some cable and TV stations, like the one in Houston, I need to plug that today, uh, are going to be carrying it. And we're going to be announcing tomorrow the satellite frequency to pick up the TV feed and just some of the battle plan as well. But mainly it's going to be informational and a bunch of guests. But we're not going to get a whole cable channel. I could probably go bankrupt trying it. 
I know a lot of folks that did get cable channels that are, quote, conservative. They're trying to offload them and get rid of them right now. A little inside baseball.